After a few seconds, the episode finally faded back in. This time it shows the inside of the morgue, which I presume to be the place where Patrick's body had been placed. The outside window shows a deep night sky, with a vast amount of stars, followed by a full moon illuminating parts of the darkened morgue. After a few seconds of this, the camera pans over slowly towards one of the shelves that holds one of the, do the dead bodies. Then it begins to vibrate in a way that was rather hard to notice, maybe because of the lack of lighting in the scene, although despite all that I could still hear it. After a few seconds of this, the shaking stops and everything goes right back to normal. Or at least what was normal in this video, that is. The scene pans out to show a doctor of some sort, walking into the morgue and turning on a few lights. Alright, let's see what uh, new, new buys we got today. Hmm. Seems to have a one by the name of Patrick Starr. Is that his name? The doctor says as he walks over towards the drawer that had been shaking and opens it up. He pulls out a large body bag and places it onto an operating table, most likely for an autopsy. As he unzips the bag, he removes it from Patrick's body and begins cutting the skin from the top part of Patrick's bottom jaw all the way down to his belly button and back up. There, he proceeds to remove the now severed chunk of skin, revealing the same pulsing, realistically rendered internal organs, entrails, and beating heart. Fucking hell, that clip still gives me chills to this very day. As the doctor proceeded to grab a few of the operating tools from a small table near him, the camera zoomed into Patrick's face. Then without warning, Patrick's eyes snap open, revealing bloodshot, pupilless eyes that seem to just stare off into nothingness. Patrick then proceeds to let out a loud scream, which causes the doctor to fumble with fright with the tools in his hands. What the heck is going on? The doctor yelled, completely panicked. Patrick then grabs a man's hand and begins pulling it towards him, towards his now shaven bottom jaw. The jaw itself clamping down on itself after a few seconds with the sound of teeth hitting bone. The doctor desperately tried to pull away, even slashing at Patrick a few times with a scalpel to make him stop. But it was all done in vain, as Patrick immediately clamped down in the hand, biting the top part of the hand off below the wrist. Cartoony blood began to spew out of the doctor's hand as he screamed out in a mix of pain and agony. The scene then cut to the front office desk and lobby, with a few more doctors and nurses drip dropping everything that they were doing and rushing over towards the room that the screaming had come from. However, once they opened up the door to the room, everyone gasped. Funny thing though, however, once they opened up the door to the room, nothing else happened after that. It didn't cut away to the rest of the doctors, and it didn't cut it away into the interior of the room. Which in retrospect was great, because what happened afterwards in these last few minutes of the episode was more than my stomach could honestly handle. The screen then faded to black for about three seconds before a time card read, three days later, with the usual French narrator in the background saying it. The scene then cut back to show Sandy's tree dome at night, to which it then panned into Sandy's treehouse, with her pouring herself a cup of tea, followed by her walking out of her treehouse and onto the base of the tree dome. She sighs and sits down next to her picnic table. I'm sure I'm feeling bad for SpongeBob. Poor little guy. Can't say I be blaming him, though. He did lose his best friend, Sandy said as she took a sip from her tea. I'm just glad that Mr. Krabs gave him the month off, with pay, of course, so that he can mourn properly. It's a good thing, though, that Master Krabs really kept his word. Just as Sandy was about to take another sip of her tea, there was a soft groan that played in the background. Sandy immediately turned her head towards the source of the sound, to which the camera followed suit, but nothing was shown. The scene panned back over towards Sandy, who just shrugged and continued drinking her tea. When she was finished, she yawned and made her way inside of the treehouse. The scene lingered on for a bit with the scene of the treehouse door. That is, until a faint shadow could be seen in the background. The camera then cut back to the inside of Sandy's bedroom, with Sandy lying down in her bed in her pajamas with the lights off. She starts to snore, but then the same groan from before plays louder this time. Sandy's eyes immediately shot open at this, and she turned on her bedroom lamp. This part made me shit my fucking pants. 
out of Sandy's view, behind her that is, was Patrick on the front side. His entire body was, pale, was a palish pink color. His eyes were bloodshot, pink around the edges, and pupilless. And the skin from his lower jaw to his belly button was exposed, showing what looked like a giant mouthful filled with guts and other internal organs. Sandy sighs a bit and then proceeds to shut off the light. As she does this, the same groan could be heard, but this time much louder than before. Sandy wakes up. Sandy wakes up and does the same thing, but instead of Patrick being near her, he's nowhere to be seen. Sandy takes the time to start looking around her room, but sees nothing. Just as Sandy is about to shut the lights off for the last time, Patrick immediately falls from the ceiling and crash lands onto Sandy, muffling her screams in the process. The camera then cuts to the lamp falling to the ground, shattering into small pieces. All the while, the sounds of Sandy's muffled screams along with Patrick's moans could be heard for a few seconds before the sound of a neck snapping could be heard. Everything goes silent for a moment, before the sound of eating, tearing flesh, and blood splattering in the walls and dripping down to the floor could not only be heard, but also seen. The screen fades once more, and this was about the time that I nearly shat bricks. This question started to fill my mind. After taking another quick breather, I continued with the episode. The camera then cut back to show Squidward's home for at least a few seconds in the outerior, before cutting to Squidward sitting on his couch watching TV, with a bored expression on his face and bandages around his, well, head, and a missing tooth, from where Spongebob had repeatedly beat the living shit out of him. Suddenly, there was a knock at Squidward's door, to which he ignores. The knocking grows louder and louder until Squidward looks as if he's about to kill someone. He immediately stomps over towards the door, opens it, and looks outside. The camera pans both right and left to show what is there, but there's nothing. Squidward huffs in agitation before slamming the door shut and going back to watching television. After about a few seconds into this, the knocking sound returns, to which Squidward goes absolutely berserk in less than 2.5 seconds. He even smashes his own door down in a fit of anger and rage. Okay, whoever you are, it's not Halloween, so get off my property, Squidward yells. After he finishes that sentence, Squidward started to look around his home, trying to find the source and the culprit of the knocking. As he continues to walk around his home, he looks over at his garden area and notices movement right next to the shed. He decides to go and walk over there. I'll show that little pest what's for. I'll get my rake and... And the next kid to ding-dong ditch me is getting a face full of metal teeth, Squidward said, grunting in anger. Walking towards his shed and opening the door, Squidward immediately reached his hand up in the air to pull on the light cord. However, the room failed to be illuminated by the light bulb. Squidward, now completely agitated and at this point, begins to start searching around for his rake in the darkness. As he does this, he bumps into something and falls to the ground. What the heck was that? Squidward says as he looks up. Towering above him was a shadowy figure, which to be honest, I couldn't exactly make out due to how dark the scene was. The camera then cut back to Squidward, who began to get right back up. But as he does this, something kicks him in the stomach and he falls right back down to the ground. Hey! <coughs> What's the big idea? Squidward calls out. And then in an instant... The towering figure walks near one of the windows of the shed, allowing the dimness of the moonlight to illuminate its, or rather his, face. As I had expected, it was Patrick. Face blank, eyes still bloodshot, and mouth still stretched in that nightmarish way. The camera then cut back to Squidward, who now starts to panic at this point. He screams and make his way towards the door, but just as he's about to open it and flee, Patrick's arm grabs Squidward by the collar of his shirt and slowly but surely starts to drag him closer and closer and closer to the pink menace. Patrick then presses his face right next to Squidward, leaving only a few inches of room to separate them. P Patrick, please, please, I'm sorry, okay? I, 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 did, I didn't mean for you to... I, I didn't mean to say those things that I did... Please, 
Please, please, Patrick, don't hurt me. Squidward mutters, almost on the verge of a mental breakdown. Patrick just glares at Squidward. And then, his facial expression changes from a blank stare to one of pure anger and rage. I mean, if Patrick had done this beforehand in his normal way, it wouldn't have been that scary, but I swear that face itself will forever haunt my dreams as I sleep each night. Squidward lets out a loud scream before Patrick opens his jaw wide and bites down on Squidward's neck. One disgusting crack and tearing of skin is all that it took before the rest of Squidward's body fell to the ground, headless. Like before with Sandy, the scene cuts to only show the bottom half of Squidward's body as Patrick begins to eat the now severed head of Squidward, groaning as he did such. It was at that point that I was really confused. For one, how the hell did Patrick manage to come back after dying in the hospital? And I mean, was he was he still in that coma? It just didn't make sense. But I think the most important question is, why was he killing his friends? Okay, I kind of get Squidward, but why everyone else? The episode didn't really make that much sense in the long run, but that honestly did nothing to soften the blow of this messed up fuckery that I was being subjected to. The scene then cut immediately to Spongebob sitting down on his couch in his pajama pants like normal. This time, however, he's holding a picture of him and Patrick. He sniffles and places the picture on a small table near his couch. I miss you so much, buddy, Spongebob said sadly as he lied down on the couch. I wish I helped you out more. I wish I had done more to help you. I just want you back, Patrick. That's all I want. Spongebob said once again, a small tear rolling down his cheek. With that done, Spongebob immediately sat right back up, turned off the TV in the living room, gets up from where he was lying down at, and begins walking up the stairs into his room. But just as, about, just as he's about to crawl himself into bed, the sound of Gary's screaming and the sound of glass shattering could be heard in the background. Spongebob immediately runs out of the room and bolts down into the stairs and into the kitchen. Then he turns on the light, only to reveal Patrick standing in a corner chewing on something. P P Patrick? Spongebob says with a mixture of shock, fear, and awe. Patrick doesn't answer him. Instead, he just continues to munch on whatever it, it was that he had in his hands. Patrick! Spongebob calls out once again, this time a bit louder. The camera then cuts back to Patrick, who slowly starts to turn his entire body around to face his best friend. Once he finally did, I could kind of see what he had been eating. Pieces of shell, snail slime, and chunks of Gary's body were splattered all over him, coating the entirety of his exposed organs and flesh and a sleek shine of slime. The camera cuts back to Spongebob, who is now shaking like crazy. He begins to sweat profusely, and tears pour from his eyes like a fountain. Patrick drops the rest of Gary's half-eaten remains, and then proceeds to run at Spongebob. Spongebob, at this point, immediately sees this and dodges it, running deep into the kitchen and pulling out a spatula. Listen to me, Patrick. I don't want to hurt you. Spongebob said as he waved his spatula around threateningly. Patrick turns right back to Spongebob and lets out a disgustingly wet gurgling sound before walking towards a knife holster and pulling out a small blade. Oh, hungry, Patrick says in that wet voice of his. Patrick, please, please just put the knife down, Spongebob begs. Patrick grins, and his teeth grind against each other in an ear-bleeding fashion. Then without another warning, Patrick lunges at Spongebob again, and then proceeds to knock the spatula out of Spongebob's hand. At this point, there was a huge struggle between the two, with Spongebob blocking Patrick's jabs and attacks, while at the same time begging his best friend to stop what he was doing, although it seemed to me that they really weren't working for him. Finally. 
Patrick had wind up pinning him, pinning Pat, pinning SpongeBob down to the ground, and Patrick immediately grabs SpongeBob's hands and begins to bite down on it, ripping chunks of his flesh, fingers, and everything else away from it. SpongeBob screaming in agony and looking around, trying to find some kind of device he could use to defend himself. He takes one look, and with his free hand, he finds a skillet. He pushes Patrick away for a split second, managing to free his hand away from Patrick's grasp. Then, with his now free hand, as well as his mutilated one, SpongeBob grabbed the skillet and smashed it against Patrick's head with every single ounce of force that he could possibly give. Patrick immediately goes limp for a few seconds. He stays like that for a few seconds before falling down on the floor in a heap. SpongeBob then climbs up to Patrick and begins to bash in Patrick's head with the skillet, all the while screaming, I'm sorry, over and over and over again. The skillet itself continued to hit Patrick during the duration sending wave after wave of blood, smashed brain, and cracked skull everywhere. It was disgusting, yet at the same time, horrible. Completely horrible. And finally, with one final, sw with one final swing, SpongeBob takes a skillet and smashes it right down on Patrick's head one last time, sending a disgustingly wet cracking sound. After a few minutes of Spongebob sitting there breathing heavily, he then falls to the ground and bawls his eyes out, screaming as he does so, before the episode cut to black for a final time and ended. Now do you see why I think that the writers are demented fucks? The video itself was nothing else more than a fucked up torture porn of Spongebob, who not only wound up losing his best friend to a horrible disease, but also wound up losing Sandy and his bet Gary and having to kill his best friend in order to save his own life. I mean, if that isn't disgusting and demented as all hell, then I don't know what is. I will say though, I am grateful that this episode never really aired. However, I'm also grateful, albeit, is the fact of the matter that I at least have seen this. At least I know for a fact why the creators themselves are a sick bunch of people. No, I don't particularly hate these individuals, but I think they are disgusting. They truly are. Disgusting people for making something as insensitive as this. That's pretty much everything else. Thank you guys again for listening to my story. It still sucks, however, that I'm not able to upload any footage of this story, with the view exception of a couple of screenshots, but even then, though, I'm pushing it. But I'll try and do what I possibly can to make sure I spread the truth behind these disgusting people as much as I can. That way, that the people making this will realize that we won't tolerate or stand for any of these things ever again. Hello there, my little shadows. It's me again, your master, the Shadow Reader. I hope you all enjoyed this little tale of horror. I honestly hope I didn't traumatize you too much after this. If you're new here and want to become one of my little shadows, then hit that subscribe button down below, and also make sure to turn on post notifications so that you can be the first to watch my brand new content when it comes out. <laughs> Until then, sweet dreams, my little shadows. <laughs>